Okay. So first of all, I, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me. And uh, so the talk is going to be about uh, the, the automorphisms of uh, moduli of curves. Okay. So uh, I will denote by MGN the stack uh, parameterizing uh, the Lin Manford uh, and pointed. Table genus G curves. So this means that uh, this object here is uh, parameterizing possibly reducible nodal curves of arithmetic genus G with uh, uh, n mark points. And MGN. Uh, is going to be its uh, coarse uh, modular space. So uh, the question here is uh, very natural. And uh, so MGN, it's uh, a projective variety with uh, at most uh, finite portion singularities. And the questions we are uh, going to answer is uh, uh, what is the uh, automorphism group of this variety? Okay. So, <clears throat> G is equal to zero, we know that uh, M03 is a point, M04 is P1, and uh, in uh, 2010, Bruno and Mella proved that uh, if N is greater or equal than five, then the automorphism group of M0N is isomorphic to SN, where uh, the action of uh, SN of uh, M0N is just the action permuting the, the N mark points. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it is on the Journal of the European Mathematical Society. And uh, so then we know that in uh, 1989, uh, Royden uh, proved that uh, if uh, 2G minus 2 plus N is greater or equal than 3, then uh, the automorphism group of MGN without the bar modulo SN is trivial. So let's come to the theorem. So what I proved in 2011 is the following. So if uh, 2G minus 2 plus N is greater or equal than 3, then the automorphism group of the stack is isomorphic to the automorphism group of the coarse modular space, and they are isomorphic to SN. If not, if 
2g minus 2 plus n is less than 3, there are a few cases missing. And uh, we have that the homomorphism group of n12 stack is trivial. while the automorphism group of uh, the coarse modular space is uh, C star square. And uh, OK, finally, this case is trivial. The automorphism group of uh, the stack N11 is uh, C star. And the automorphism group of uh, N11 Course model space is uh, PGL2. So, in the last case, which is very trivial, so we know that uh, M11 is uh, isomorphic to P1, so the automorphism group is, is uh, PGL2, but the stack, M11, is isomorphic to the weighted projected line P46. So, you see that here, there is uh, uh, the general point corresponds to an elliptic curve with two automorphisms, the identity and the elliptic involution. And there is another special point with automorphism group as uh, Z4, and another special point with uh, automorphism group Z6. So an automorphism of the stack must fix uh, this point and this point. And that's why you get uh, just uh, C star. Now, to prove this theorem, the, the main ingredient is a theorem 2000 due to Gibney, Keel, and Morrison <coughs> about the fibration of MGM. So this theorem says that uh, if F is a fibration from MGM to a projective variety. Here, G is greater than 1. Then, either uh, F is birational, and uh, the exceptional locus of F is contained in the boundary. Or uh, the dimension of the fiber of F is greater or equal than 1, and uh, F factorizes through a forgetful morphism. So this means that uh, here you have MGN, here you have your fibration, F, with fiber at least a curve. The theorem says that this fibration here necessarily factorizes through a forgetful morphism like this. So this forgetful morphism is just uh, the natural morphism forgetting uh, a bunch of points. Okay. So now, using th this theorem, let us uh, let us consider the maybe the, the simplest case, which is uh, n equal to one and g greater or equal than three. So in this case, you pick an automorphism of uh, mg one. And uh, you can consider the composition with uh, the forgetful morphism. P1 forgetting the mark point to NG. OK? So now you consider this, uh, this composition, and you are in the situation of the theorem. That here, F is uh, pi 1 composed with phi. And the theorem says that this composition has to factorize through a forgetful morphism, which is necessarily pi 1. 
and here you have an automorphism of MG. Now, pick a general point C in MG that the class of gamma be phi bar of C. So in the diagram you have here you have C, the general point, which is sent to gamma. So what is the fiber of pi 1 over the class of C? The fiber of pi 1 over the class of C is C because uh, the class of C here is a general point and uh, we have G greater than, than 3, so the automorphism group of the curve is trivial. And uh, the fiber of ga over gamma as well is a curve isomorphic to gamma. So here the diagram is commutative. You have that phi defines, uh, phi defines an isomorphism between C and gamma, which means that uh, indeed the class of C is equal to the class of gamma, which means that phi bar is the identity. Okay, so the diagram, now you can write it like this. And we know that uh, uh, now phi restricts to an automorphism of the general fiber, which is uh, a curve of genus G greater or equal than 3. So phi restricted to the general fiber of pi 1 is the identity. And therefore, clearly, phi is the identity. So what we prove, we prove that uh, the automorphism group so, so far, we proved that if G is greater or equal than 3, then the automorphism group of uh, MG1 is trivial. Okay? Fine. So, immediately you see that this, uh, this approach completely fails, uh, for instance, in genus 2, because in genus 2, <coughs> you have the hyperelliptic involution. In genus 1 as well, you have the elliptic involution. And uh, so, for instance, let's consider for M to 1, let's say uh, we adopt a different strategy. So the first step is to prove, let's say, a proposition that uh, any automorphism of mg, mg bar, preserves the boundary. So let me give an idea of the proof. So there is a, a bundle called the Hodge bundle. So the Hodge bundle on MG, call it lambda, induces aberrational morphism F lambda from uh, MG to projective variety X such that the exceptional locus of F lambda is exactly the boundary of uh, MG bar. So it, now, if you assume that there exists an automorphism of mg bar not preserving the boundary, you can compose uh, this uh, automorphism with uh, this f lambda, and you get a birational contraction of mg contracting something that is not contained in the boundary. And this will contradict uh, this uh, theorem by Kimnikil Morris. So, why is this useful for us? Because now we know that, in particular, 
uh, any automorphism of M2 preserves the boundary. And we know that for this theorem, that for M2 as well, we have this kind of situation. There we go, phi 1. Yeah, that's it. Is this attack compatibilization? For example, you have a curve where you have four curves. Yes. I I didn't understand. I think this divider is not subtractive where you have two curves like that. No, it is. It is. No, I, th I think that, I think that the, the, the okay. Okay, we'll discuss it later. Thanks. So now here you have uh, you have an automorphism like this, and uh, since uh, phi, uh, phi bar preserves the boundary. This will imply that phi preserves the boundary. This is not true in general, but it is true in this particular case because the boundary of M21 is particularly simple. So you have just two boundary components mapped to the corresponding two boundary components of M2. And uh, you know that uh, these uh, automorphisms here preserve the boundary, and by continuity, the other has to preserve the boundary. And the last step is uh, use Royden theorem. Which says that uh, the automorphism group of uh, M to 1 without the bar is trivial. So the argument is, now you know that uh, phi preserves the boundary, so it restricts to an automorphism of the interior. You know that it is trivial on the interior by Royden theorem, so it is trivial. Now, what about the case g equal to 1? So m to 1 is a surface. Uh, so you have uh, m12. You can pick the, uh, the first forgetful morphism to m11, which is isomorphic to p1. And you get that. Uh, This M12 is a root surface over P1. And here you have a boundary divisor over the curve over this nodal cubic. So let's call this boundary divisor delta here. And you have another boundary divisor, let's call it delta 0, 2. The general point of delta 0, 2 is a P1 uh, and a curve of genus 1 with the two marked points over the P1. Okay, now you can compute that. Uh, so there is a curve here with, let's call it C4 with four automorphisms, and another elliptic curve with six automorphisms. And here there is the fiber over C4 and the fiber over C6. This one is a four, this one is a six. And this surface has exactly four singular points, one here, one here, one here, and one here. And there is a birational morphism, F, contracting delta 0, 2, which is indeed isomorphic to P1, to the smooth point 1, 0, 0 in the weighted projective plane P1, 2, 3. So now, what do you know? You know that an automorphism of this surface must preserve the exceptional divisor and preserve this fiber and this fiber. So it is induced by an automorphism of P1 to 3, fixing this point, stabilizing the image f of f4, the image f of x is. So now it's just computation to compute the, the automorphism of P1 to 3 doing this. And the answer is that uh, this thing here is isomorphic to C star squared. 
This is more or less the argument. Now, in the, in the general case, what you do in order to construct a morphism of groups between the automorphism group of MGN and SM is the following. So you pick a, an automorphism of MGN. So now, for each i between 1 and n, you can consider the composition with the corresponding forgetful morphism. So by gibb nikhil morrison theorem, this composition here has to factorize through another forgetful morphism. And here, you have uh, an automorphism of MGN minus 1. So the morphism of groups uh, from uh, out MGN to SN, the morphism mapping phi to the permutation mapping I to JI. Okay. Now what is left is to prove that the morphism is injective, but <coughs> so, kind of injective. And you do this by induction on N. Okay? So now, I would like to discuss how to extend some of these techniques uh, to other compactifications of uh, MGN introduced by, by Hassett, so it's in Hassett, in 2002, introduced uh, 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 new compactifications. of uh, MGN, say, by assigning uh, weight to the mark points. So he introduces these weight vectors, AN, A1, AN where the AI are rational numbers between uh, 0 and 1. And uh, he defined this notion of, uh, so C, say, S1, Sn is a uh, An stable. family of nodal curves if uh, so the first condition is if uh, uh, let's say s i1 s i r so a bunch of section have uh, non empty intersection then the sum of the AI, the IJ, SIJ should be less or equal than one. So this is the first difference between this compactification and the classical Delin-Manfo compactification. So in the Delin-Manfo compactification, two mark points uh, have to be different necessarily. In this case, they can coincide, but the sum of the weights has to be less or equal than one. And uh, the other condition is uh, the relative uh, canonical bundle plus uh, the sum of the AI SI is uh, pi relatively ample. So 
So the remark is that uh, if you choose, uh, for instance, a n to be one one one, uh, we get uh, exactly m g n. Okay. Now you see that uh, in this setting, it is not true that uh, uh, any permutation uh, induces uh, an automorphism of uh, the corresponding asset model space. For instance. Let me give you an example. If you take uh, G equal to and A4, A4 equal to 1, 1 over 3, 1 over 3, 1 over 3, then you have a boundary divisor delta with general points parameterizes a curve like this. This is genus 0, this is genus 2, and uh, you can put 1 here. 1 over 3 here, 1 over 3 here, 1 over 3 here. But now, if you switch uh, 1 and 4, then the situation is the following. You have uh, 1 over 3 here, 1 over 3 here, 1 over 3 here, and 1 here. But now, this component here, this additional component, is not stable anymore. So here, from the modular point of view, you, you're contracting a, a P1 with four mark points to a point. So on the modular space, on M2A4, this uh, transposition is, in, is inducing a Aberrational morphism contracting a divisor to a co-dimension two, co two dimension two sub variety of uh, M two A four. But you see that here the, the problem is that we are switching two points and one of them is on a rational tail. So this suggests uh, the following definition. So a transposition uh, between two indices, ij, is admissible if uh, for any a i one a i r with uh, r greater or equal than two, we have uh, a i plus the sum of the a i uh, k less or equal than one, if and only if i j plus the same sum is less or equal than one. So this is exactly what you need in order to avoid that kind of situation. Okay. And you can prove that a transposition like this induces indeed an automorphism of uh, MGAN. So now, you can define this subgroup of uh, Sn, the subgroup uh, induced, uh, generated by admissible transposition. And uh, you can prove that 
if uh, again 2g minus 2 plus n is greater or equal than 3 and uh, g is greater or equal than 1, the morphism chi from mg a n to this subgroup is indeed an isomorphism. So the automorphism group of this asset modular space is exactly the subgroup of Sn generated by the admissible transposition. So okay, this is uh, myself and Mendo. Now, what about the genus zero? Is the same I defined before. So you have. Uh, you have an automorphism of this thing. Mm -hmm. You compose it with, with a forgetful morphism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can extend it easily to, to this case. Okay. Yeah. Now, what about the genus zero? So uh, this one is admissible if uh, for any bunch of air points okay, with uh, air greater or equal than 2, so you have at least two of them, this condition is satisfied. So the, the, the weight corresponding to the point xi plus the sum of these weights is less or equal than 1 if and only if the weight corresponding to j plus the same sum is uh, less or equal than 1. This is in order to avoid that here, for instance, here you, you could have something that uh, is stable and once you switch, it's not stable anymore. So you have to contract a rational component with more than three points on the rational component. So you are, con you, are doing, you are doing some, I mean, if you contract a rational component with three mark points, that's a P1. You can do this, but n not uh, four more. You mean this map here? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a section. Yeah. Okay. So, what about the, the genus zero case? This here? This is R. So. Okay, let's do like this. It's, uh, it's another thing. So, so in the genus zero, there is a, a construction due to Kapranov. So Kapranov uh, constructed. M0n, say, by a sequence of blow-ups, uh, starting from Pn minus 3. So what's the construction? So you start with uh, pi 1, pi n minus 1, in pi n minus 3 in linear general position and uh, blow up pi 1 pi n minus 2 then uh, the line spanned by pi i pi j with i j in this range from 1 to n minus 2 and uh, finally you blow up uh, the codimension to uh, linear subspaces of uh, Pn minus 3 
spend uh, by n minus four points in uh, pi one, pi n minus two. So this is the first step of Kapranov's construction. The second step, you blow up the last point, blow up p n minus one, and then all the lines spanned by pi i, pi n minus one. And here again, in the end, you blow up the codimension two linear subspaces. And you go on like this. And in the last step, you blow up the codimension two linear subspace spanned by p4 pi n minus one. So what's the point of this construction? So the first remarkable thing is that uh, after all these uh, sequence of blow ups, so the composition of these blow ups uh, gives uh, a morphism, aberrational morphism equal f from m0n and pn minus 3. So you get n0n in the end. And the second remarkable thing is that each variety you obtain here in the middle has an interpretation as uh, asset moduli space. And indeed, if uh, WRS, uh, say, is the variety obtained uh, say at this step uh, R, once uh, we have blown up all the linear spaces uh, generated by subset S of the set of the marked points with uh, cardinality of s less or equal to r plus s minus 2. And this variety here is isomorphic indeed to m0 a r s n, where a r s n is uh, given by 1 over <coughs> n minus R minus S, 1 over N minus R minus S. I'm sorry, 1 over N minus R, 1 over R minus R, 1 over N minus R. Minus 1, R minus 1 times. Then here you have to put S over N minus R minus 1. And here you have to put 1, 1, 1 R times. So apart for M0N, there is another space which is interesting from another point of view in this construction. And it is the space that you obtain in the end of the, of the, last, of the first step here. So what is the first step? In the first step, you just blow up uh, uh, N minus two points, which are the toric points of Pn minus three. And then you blow up all the linear spaces generated by a bunch of them. So, say, in the end of uh, the first step, uh, we get uh, a toric variety, which is uh, also denoted by ln minus 2 bar. The historic variety is the loset man in uh, model space. So the historic variety parameterizes chains of P1s where you have uh, two fixed map points on the stream of components and n minus two free points. Okay. 
So what we proved is that, so let's put it like this, a computation of the automorphism groups of the asset spaces appearing in Caprano construction In particular, we have covered that uh, the automorphism group of MZON is a SN for n greater equal than 5. And and that the automorphism group of LN minus 2 bar is uh, C star uh, to the n minus 3 cross uh, Sn minus 2 cross S2. OK, so let me discuss this uh, last thing. So I told you that uh, this uh, Ln minus 2 is obtained by blowing up uh, uh, Pn minus 3 in uh, n minus two points in linear general position, and uh, uh, in all the, the linear subspaces uh, spanned by them. So this C star to the n minus three corresponds to clearly to the automorphism of uh, P n minus three uh, fixing P one, P n minus two. Then you have uh, an S n minus two corresponding clearly to the permutations of uh, P1, Pn minus 2. And then the last one, the S2, which is a little bit more mysterious, is uh, the lifting of the standard Cremona of Pn minus 3. So if you know a little bit this, this standard Cremona transformation on Pn minus 3 is just the birational transformation of Pn, of Pn minus 3 induced by degree, degree n minus 3 uh, hypersurfaces having uh, multiplicity n minus 4 in P1, Pn minus 2. And the base locus of this linear system is exactly the subvariety of Pn minus 3 we we, are, we blow up to in order to get the loss of money model space, for instance. To the, <coughs> the simplest case. So n equal to 5. So for n equal to 5, the Caprano construction is like this. So you start with P2. You have four points in P2. At first, uh, you blow up three of them, and uh, you get the loss of money, L3, uh, three. three exceptional divisors. And then you blow up uh, the last one, and you get M05. So what I'm saying is that here, the automorphism group of this L3 are the automorphism group of P2 fixing this, this, and this, which is a C star square. Then you have the S3, which are the permutation of this tree. And then you have the S2, which is nothing but the Cremona transformation induced by the conics through the three points. So you are blowing up exactly the, the base locus of the linear system, and uh, you get a, a, bi a biregular automorphism of, uh, of the blow up. Okay. Once you blow up the non-toric point, which is 1, 1, 1, uh, you lose a lot of them. All the toric automorphism, and uh, you get S5. OK. Finally, I would like to discuss a little bit uh, 
what happens in, in positive characteristic. So let me do the case, uh, uh, let me consider M0n. So we know that M0n is a projective uh, variety uh, over D. So in particular, if K is a field, we may consider may denote it by M0n bar k, M0n over k. So we know that uh, if k is uh, algebraically closed of characteristic 0, then the, uh, its automorphism group is Sn at least for n greater or equal than 5. So you see that now, if you assume that k is of characteristic 0, but not algebraically closed, you have, uh, so say, if k but not uh, algebraically closed, then uh, you can take uh, its algebraic it, uh, it closure so we have a morphism like this and uh, by restriction we get a morphism from m0 and k to M0 and K bar. OK? Now, now we know that uh, the automorphism group of M0 and K bar. Oh, I'm sorry. M0 and K bar, M0 and K. OK. So now we know that the automorphism group of M0 and K bar is a chain for N greater or equal than 5. And uh, this implies clearly that the automorphism group of M0 and uh, K is the same as well. Now, to extend this in positive characteristic, it's a little bit harder, say, K be a field of characteristic P. So here we have to consider the, the ring we denoted by WK of uh, with vectors. Okay. So what, what is important for us is that. Uh, WK is a discrete uh, valuation ring with uh, residue field K and uh, function field KZ. And this function field is of characteristic 0. So now the idea is to consider 
M0n over this ring. So here you have a fiber over a closed point which is M0nk over our field of characteristic zero. And uh, the general fiber, which is M0n kxz in characteristic zero. So we start with an automorphism of M0nk. So what we would like to do is to extend this automorphism of M0nk to the entire family, to M0nwk, and then to restrict it on uh, M0nkz in order to obtain an automorphism, a uh, morphism of groups between M0nk in positive characteristic to out M0n kxz in characteristic zero. And we know that this is Sn. So if we manage to do this, now take an automorphism of M0n kxz, kxz and assume this is the identity. So this automorphism by construction come from, uh, comes from an automorphism of the whole family, which uh, has to be the identity because uh, xi is the, is the general point. And then it has to be the identity over the special fiber as well. So this morphism is injective, it is a, it, and it is a, indeed an isomorphism. So what's the problem in doing this? The problem is that uh, we have to show that an automorphism of an, of an infinitesimal deformation of uh, this uh, M0nk extend to an automorphism of an infinitesimal deformation of higher order. This is more or less the idea. And uh, so the abstractions to extend uh, an automorphism of uh, an infinitesimal deformation of uh, M0nk to Niger order infinitesimal deformation, no matter what is the order of the infinitesimal deformation, this is general. Uh, is contained in this cohomology, is contained in the H1 M0nk, the tangent bundle. So now we have to prove that each, it is H1 is 0. And uh, let me finish just saying this. So the theorem due to myself and Fanteki says that, um, put it like this, over any field of characteristic zero, uh, mg a n is rigid. And uh, over any field, not necessarily of characteristic zero, M zero n is rigid. Okay, rigid meaning no infinitesimal deformations. So this means that in over any field of characteristic zero, this cohomology vanishes. And for M0n in particular, over any field, this cohomology vanishes. This means that there are no abstraction in order to lift uh, uh, an automorphism of an infinitesimal deformation of M0nk to an higher order automorphism. And then you can construct, starting from this automorphism phi, an automorphism phi twiddle of uh, uh, M0n. WK, 
and now by restriction you can construct an automorphism of uh, M0n in characteristic 0. You know that this is a permutation. Now you know that this uh, morphism is clearly surjective and injective. And you get that, uh, uh, you get that, uh, uh, over any field, the automorphism group of uh, M0 and K is isomorphic to SN for N greater or equal than 5. Okay? Oh, I'm done.